Okay, so let's get cracking. First, I'm going to navigate to the user challenge and I'll create those state values. Basically, I know that I'll have two of them. So while I'm setting up one, I might as well set up the second one. So name and then set name and that is equal to use uh, state. Let's pass in the empty value first, copy and paste. And like I said, in my case, I'm going to go with users set. And also I'm going to do it over here. Now for now, since I haven't imported anything, let me just set it up as an empty array. Let's save this. And now I want to set up that controlled input. So I need to look for my input. And then here, remember value that is equal to the state value. And then the second one is the on change. And this is going to be equal to our arrow function. We'll grab the event object and we'll go with set name and we'll pass in the event dot target and then the value. So now we have our controlled input. Next, I want to set up just the log when we submit the form. So in here, notice Vite is pretty quick. Basically, the moment you type the value, it spits back this error. Don't worry, we don't have it. Everything is correct. And like I was saying, we want to set up that handle submit. So let's go over here and I'm going to call this handle submit. I'm going to get the object, yes, the event object more precisely. And here, let's start with prevent the default. And I'm going to go with just log. I'll say form, form submitted. Okay, good. And now let's navigate to the form. And then let's set up on submit. Beautiful. And let's pass in the handle submit. Let's save that. And if everything is correct, we should see form submitted. Awesome. And once we have this set up in place, now let's grab that data. So let me try here whether I can actually do it. Data. And uh, nope, that doesn't give me anything. Okay, let's grab it from the file. So import data, and then from and now we need to go quite a few levels up. So one, two, and then this should be coming from the data. Let me just double check quickly. So data data. Yep, that's the correct one. Probably not the best naming. But as I was setting up, that's the one that I used. So this is going to be our default value for the users. And now let's navigate over here, where we render and then like I said, right after form, we're going to go with users. And now let's iterate over those users and simply return a div. Since we potentially might set up a button, Again, that is totally up to you. But in my case, I'll try to do that at least. And then users map. So we're iterating over and then this should be already very familiar. We have done that quite a few times during the course. And that's why I keep pushing for you to set it up on your own. Because we have covered that you just need to practice. That's it. There's no real secret. And as far as the return, I'm going to go here with div. And then let's set up the key. This is where we're iterating over. So I'm going to go with user ID because I know that's in my array, in the object more precisely. And then as far as the value, well, like I said, let's not overcomplicate things. We're just going to go with user and then name. And let's save. And this is what we should see on the screen. So here's our task. And you know what? Let me make this one as heading two so it stands out. Now, every time the user submits the form, Essentially, we want to add a new user to our array. So this basically is the main challenge. And effectively, we can do it this way. So first I have the handle submit, correct? Now I need to grab the value of the name. But here's the thing, user might try to submit the form, basically without entering anything. And this is normally where we would display the alert, or some kind of toast or whatever that all the values need to be submitted. But in this case, we'll simply return from this function. So the most basic check is following, I can say if, and if there is no name, if you want, of course, you can log stuff, that's totally up to you. But in my case, I'm just going to go with the return. And you'll notice that if the user tries to submit the form with empty values, I'll have nothing in a console. So again, this stresses the point that 
we're not going to get to this line. JavaScript is going to keep on reading, and this is the early return. JavaScript is going to be, okay, this actually matches. There's no value in here. So I'm just going to return from this function. That's the most basic check again for the empty value. And yes, before you ask, if you have multiple values, let's say name, email, password, and all that, then basically you go with or, and then again, you check. So we go with this not operator and we say, if it meets the condition, then we're not essentially doing anything. We're just returning from the function. So that's the first step. Now, the second one, if there's actually some value, so let's say if the user types something and I click notice form submitted, now I want to construct that user. And this is the case where, yes, basically, I'll have to create a new object on the fly and I'll have to add it to my existing array. So let's start over here. Let's say that there is some kind of value. First thing we need to do is set up that ID. Now, of course, you can hard code somehow, but one neat trick while you're basically working on some simple application like this one, you can just use some helpers. And in this case, I'm going to use date.now. Again, this is not for serious projects. In that case, of course, it's going to be more complex, but also keep in mind one thing that normally you're communicating with database anyway, and database is responsible for setting up those IDs. So this is just for practice, where since I know that my user has both ID and name, I just manually need to create that ID because name, of course, is going to be provided by this input. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's go here with const and then fake ID. And like I said, I'm just going to use date.now, but please don't use that in any serious project. And if you want, you can log. So actually, those are going to be milliseconds from, I believe, 1970 or something along those lines. So if we go over here and if we type, check it out. Notice this is going to be my value again. Just something nifty that we can use while we're working on this project. So let me just comment this one out for your reference, if you want. And then now let's construct that user. So we're going to go here with const new user, and that is equal to an object. So I have two properties. First one is going to be ID, which is going to be equal to fake ID. And then the second one is name. Now, where is the name coming from? Well, it's coming from the state, correct? Over here. And we only get to this functionality if there's some value in the input. If not, then we won't even get to it. And now let's construct that new array, the one that we will set up using set users. So in here, let's go with const, and then I'll call this updated users. And then that one is equal to, first I wanna spread out all of these values because I'll be adding to this array. Again, I don't wanna overwrite that. Keep in mind, we can pass here whatever we want. So if you'll just simply place new user in the set users, you'll set your array now equal to an object. That's not what we wanna do. We wanna spread out, so we wanna copy all of the current values from the users, and then we wanna add the new one. So I'll say here, new user, and we'll use this updated users and set it as our new value. So we'll go set users, and we'll pass in updated users. And lastly, it kind of makes sense if we clean out the input, right? Otherwise, it's just going to stay there. And the way we do that is simply by typing set name again, same function, whatever we have over there, and we just provide the empty value. Now, I don't think we need any more of this one. We can remove and now check it out. Essentially, as I'm going to be submitting something, this is going to be my new user. And then if user tries to submit with empty values, nothing happens. However, if we do provide the value, and if I say Bob, then check it out. If I take a look at my browser, I have Bob over here. And input is also nicely set to an empty string. 